Tracks is sponsored by Polaris, think outside. Can-Am, time for some off-road living. And by Yamaha, revs your heart. I have done countless stories on Polaris' Razor vehicles, and I honestly thought I didn't have anything else to say. But this latest Razor release of the Turbo R and most importantly, the Pro R have left me with a whole bunch of new thoughts on the only vehicle that can claim the title of the world's first mass produced sport side by side. So today I do want to go back and touch on a few Razor milestones, ones that I feel paved the way for the all new and groundbreaking Pro R. To start, let's go right back to the beginning, to the very first Razor 800. By today's standards, it wasn't very powerful, didn't have great suspension, and was in reality tiny in overall size. But when it was released, the industry hadn't seen anything like it. It really was the first of its kind. A side-by-side -side that focused almost entirely on fun versus work or utility. Consumers had been begging for it, and Polaris didn't disappoint. With an 800cc parallel, even firing twin, four wheel independent double arm suspension, bucket seats, and a roll cage, this was the coolest thing any of us had ever seen. And it took off like a wildfire. Everyone wanted one and sales were huge, but it didn't take long for consumers to ask the age old question, what's next? And it didn't take long for Polaris to answer that question in the form of the Razor S. Basically the same platform as the Razor, just 10 inches wider with a bit more travel. Its 60 inch stance made it drastically more stable at higher speeds and the longer travel meant you could hit bigger jumps and attack rough terrain way harder. The Razor S was again, a huge success, but again, the question was quickly asked, what now? The next Razor I wanna talk about is actually one of the most important because it pushed the boundaries of what a sport side-by-side -side could be into a whole different realm. The 2011 Razor XP900 was the first sport side-by-side -side in the industry to come equipped with a three-link trailing arm rear suspension, the same style of rear suspension found on full-size trophy trucks and buggies. The difference in big bump capabilities was dramatic and it proved the point that if you wanted to build the ultimate pure sport side-by-side, -side, this was the suspension design you were gonna have to use. From that point, Polaris was on a mission. It seemed like every year we were being introduced to a new Polaris model sometimes with a new, more powerful motor, other times a completely new chassis. The XP1000, XP1000 Turbo, Velocity, and Pro XP all followed and were all offered in both two and four seat configurations. Horsepower was pushed past 180 ponies, travel numbers hit 20 and even 24 inches. By the time the Pro XP was released, sport side-by-sides had become every bit as technologically advanced as any other high-performance off-road vehicle and, to be honest, every bit as capable as well. At this point in side-by-side -side history, there were a few traits that all sport side-by-sides shared. First, all sport side-by-sides were 72 inches max and most of them were under that. And second, all sport side-by-sides were powered by either twin or triple cylinder engines that were under 1000 cc's. All of this brings us to today. Once again, Polaris has turned the industry on its nose with the release of the Turbo R and Pro R Razor models. Each of them push past the boundaries of what a sport side-by-side -side has been until now. The big story is of course the Pro R, but before I get to that, I wanna quickly look at the Turbo R model. So what is a Turbo R? Of these two new models, it is the one that's the most familiar and shares the most common parts with a Pro XP. The overall chassis dimensions are the same as is the wheelbase. However, the suspension system is completely different and ultra impressive. Incredibly strong box steel A-arms and tubular trailing arms with boxed gusseting push the overall width to 74 inches and actual wheel travel to 22.5 inches front and rear. Unitized front hubs and bearings are stronger than the ones found on the Pro XP and have five lugs instead of four. Aluminum top hat disc brake rotors are stronger and dissipate heat better and the all new Dynamics DV system is found on the Ultimate model. Under the hood, you'll find the same 181 horsepower turbocharged twin that powers the Pro XP, and the interior is the same as well. Pretty much all the accessories that fit the Pro XP will directly fit the Turbo R. In a nutshell, the Turbo R is the even more serious version of the Pro XP, and when it comes to commonalities, the base platforms are very similar. The Pro R, on the other hand, is a whole new beast from the ground up. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by MBRP Performance Exhaust, built for the Victory Lab.
Let's start with the solid box chassis and one piece welded roll cage. In terms of strength, those are significant upgrades over the Pro XP. Not just stronger, but more rigid as well, and the roll cage is tougher and therefore safer. Mated to this new chassis is the same box steel double A-arm front suspension setup as found on the Turbo R. The front shocks are mounted to the lower A-arms, and the lower shock mount is actually split and goes around the drive shaft. The same unitized hubs with five lugs as the Turbo R are also present here, and actual wheel travel is the same 22 and a half inches. Out back is where things really get interesting though. The Pro R features fully boxed steel trailing arms with integrated tow links. These arms are longer and increase the wheelbase over the Turbo R by a full eight inches. Actual rear wheel travel is an unreal 24 and a half inches. That's over two feet. Like the Turbo R, the Pro R stance is an industry leading 74 inches wide. All of this travel is damped by a full set of Fox 3.0 Live Valve X2 internal bypass electronically controlled shocks. Saying that this is the most advanced suspension system ever offered on a stock side-by-side -side doesn't quite do it justice. The system itself is called Dynamics DV, and now I'm going to make an assumption that DV stands for dual valve. If it doesn't, I think it should. This is because Dynamics DV not only adjusts compression, but also rebound damping, and both circuits are 100% independent of each other. This system not only controls how the suspension responds to chassis inputs and how it handles bumps, but it has the ability to adjust chassis attitude, whether climbing, descending, or traversing off-camber lines. Dynamics DV is impressive, there's no question, but I think the one aspect of the Pro R that people are dying to know about most is the engine. The Razor Pro R's power plant is the industry's first four-cylinder unit and displaces 1,997 cc's. It generates a whopping 225 horsepower and over 150 foot-pounds of torque. Now, there will inevitably be some that suggest this isn't very impressive when the Maverick's three-cylinder engine produces 200 horsepower from only 900 cc's. However, the Pro R's engine is naturally aspirated, and the importance of that fact can't be understated. The horsepower this engine produces is nothing short of incredible. Utilizing an engine of this size brings a few other benefits along with it. Most notably is a 1700 watt charging system that is more than capable of handling as many light bars as you can afford. The other interesting and much appreciated feature is multiple drive modes, something I feel Polaris needs to include on all their side-by-side -side models. The modes are sport, rock, and race. Selecting these modes doesn't just alter the throttle profile, but also adjusts the power steering output as well. To handle this much power, Polaris had to develop a new CV transmission. This one is dimensionally larger, has a larger belt, and dual cooling ducts. Likewise, a new drivetrain was developed that is again significantly stronger from front to back and includes a new front differential. This differential does away with Polaris's on-demand auto locking 4x4 system and instead uses a manual rocker switch to move between 2x4, 4x4 open diff, and 4x4 fully locked. The interior of the Pro R is identical to that of the Turbo R and ultimately the Pro XP. Front end bodywork is also the same with only some minor changes to the rear end bodywork to accommodate the larger engine underneath the cargo tray. The truth is, I could dedicate an entire episode of Dirt Tracks just to talking about Polaris' new Turbo R and Pro R Razor models. The list of little upgrades and new features is a mile long. Today I wanted to give you a higher level overview of the most notable and impressive new specs. We'll bring you a full and more in-depth ride review when we finally get our hands on one of these units. Polaris started the sport side-by-side -side category almost 14 years ago with the original Razor 800, and it's funny to look back on that vehicle and think about just how awesome we thought it actually was. Of course, the biggest question has always been, and will always be, what could possibly be next? For 2022, Polaris has shown us that there really aren't any limits to just how far they can go with the Razor. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Princess Auto. Make it work. Since the release of the 2022 Yamahas in mid-September, there's been a lot of excitement, especially around a couple of the new packages that are available during the 2022 model year. The entire Yamaha family gets the traditional updated graphics and coloration, but in specific, I want to focus on two new packages. 
The first of which is the XTR package in the USA, which is also known in Canada as the SE package. Now this designation from Yamaha has always meant premium coloration, premium inclusions, and just a higher level of capability right off the dealership showroom floor that requires nothing extra to be added and includes a lot of cool little accessories that you're gonna find incredibly useful on your off-road adventures. For 2022, these packages run throughout the Yamaha product lineup, but in particular, I wanna focus on the new Wolverine R-Max and the packages available for it because this is one of my favorite side-by-sides and I am super excited. And if you're looking to buy an R-Max 2 or an R-Max 4 seater in 2022, you should take a look at the XTR or SE package because it offers you a whole lot of goodness at an unbeatable price when you compare to a base model. And then you add on accessories from there. It's also a huge upsell when the time comes to trade your R-Max in for a new one. For the R-Max 2, this package comes factory equipped with a premium front bumper with factory equipped worn VRX 4,500 pound winch probably the most important accessory that you can own. You'll have to use that worn winch a little less as well because this package also includes the 30 inch tall by 10 inch wide Maxxis Carnivore tires on all four corners. And they're mounted to color matched beadlock rims and an impressive XTR and SC graphics package that's edgy and fresh. If you're looking for the R-Max 4, the only big difference is the change out of the Carnivore tires to the Carnage tires in 29 inch and a traditional nine inch width up front and 11 inch width in the rear. Make sure you take a look at all the XTR and SE packages because they're functional to the core and they're worth every penny. Now I know that I'm focusing a lot on the R-Max, but I've got one more package for you that I'm gonna tell you about because it's the R-Max that I would be purchasing personally for myself. And this setup is called the R-Max 2 Sport. It's only available for the two-seater right now and it's the most aggressive R-Max in my opinion that you can buy. Right from first glance, this kit comes in the Yamaha Racing Blue coloration and also features beautiful matching blue beadlock rims to set it off visually. Wrapped around these aftermarket looking rims are GBC 30 by 10 inch wide TerraMaster tires that'll get you hooked up to the ground no matter the situation. Now these tires are specifically designed for the R-Max and they feature something that's pretty unique, two tread configurations. Due to their asymmetrical design, you can flip the tires to the opposite rotation and get a totally different tread layout. One geared towards softer terrain and the other for harder, it's pretty unique. Now the Sport isn't just cool coloration, nice beadlock rims, and a fancy new tire. It's a whole lot more than that, and in particular, it's the suspension. The included Fox 2.0 shocks are not your standard R-Max QS3s. Nope, these are a much higher pedigree and feature fully independently adjustable, high and low speed compression on all four shocks. Increasing tunability, these shocks add a huge amount of sporty feel to the R-Max, and also help improve bottom out resistance. It's able to do all of this without giving up your low speed compliance because of the dual compression adjustments. This shock package also features a dual spring design to help conquer anything the trail throws at you and the springs are fully adjustable via threaded preload collars. This is not an R-Max to be messed with, it's aggressive and ready for whatever your trails throw at it. Now the Sport package also comes with the premium cut and sewn seats that aren't just premium looking, which they are that, but they're also premium feeling. And like the other premium R-Max packages, the Sport features soft interior touch points that help keep your long day's ride feeling even more comfortable, brushed aluminum accents on the interior, interior LED lighting, along with the driver selectable drive modes for precision tailored throttle control in all situations, from sport to general trail riding and rock crawling. For full specifications on all the 2022 Yamaha models, make sure you stop by Yamaha's websites or go to your local dealer and you can see all of the new 2022 proven off-road models. I've tested a lot of Polaris Generals over the years and I've never been shy about voicing my affection for the 1000 XP. It's always been the perfect mix of function and fun. Part of what makes the General so good is that it's largely based on a Razor. The suspension is very Razor-like and while the body is completely different, these sport-based underpinnings have always made for a vehicle that can be driven as hard and fast as you want to. Of course, this impressively large cargo box has always meant that at the end of the day, doing actual work is easy and convenient. 
When you combine both of these design features though, you open up a whole new realm of uses for the General. From hunting to camping to simply exploring the unknown, the General gives you everything you need and then just a little bit more. For 2022, Polaris is offering an extensive lineup of General models from the more basic General 1000 to the wider and more capable General XP. Each is offered in multiple trim levels, including the XP Trailhead Edition we have here. So what is a Trailhead Edition? Basically, it's a General XP Deluxe Ride Command Edition with a second level cargo rack, light bar, and limited edition paint and graphics targeted at riders who like to go on longer, more remote adventures and need to haul more gear. Polaris has outfitted the Trailhead Edition with their top-of-the-line 4,500-pound winch with synthetic cable and auto-stop magnetic fairlead. When it comes to winches, they don't get any nicer than this one. Now, the General already has excellent lighting, but an auxiliary bumper-mounted 11-inch Pro Armor light bar does an impressive job of lighting up the trail at night even more so you can keep riding well after dark. Now let's talk about cargo. I mean, it's only logical that if you're gonna head out into the wilderness, and I mean really out there, you're gonna need the ability to carry extra gear. Not just the necessities for camping though, but also all the extra stuff to make sure you can get back home no matter the scenario. This Pure Polaris second level cargo rack gives you, in my estimation, about 30 to 40% more cargo carrying capacity. It's a really nice piece that fits perfectly onto the bed using lock and ride fasteners. Now, as important as cargo capacity really is, to me, what matters most when you hit the trail is comfort and capability. Two things the General XP Trailhead has in spades thanks largely to its incredible set of Walker Evans Velocity shocks. Now, these are the same shocks found on the Velocity Series Razors. Saying they're serious doesn't even come close. Threaded preload adjusters makes maintaining the correct ride height of the vehicle as the vehicle weight changes really simple. Compression clickers mounted on the reservoirs mean you can easily fine tune the ride quality to fit your preferences and the anti-bottoming protection provided by Walker's needle technology means you're well insulated even on the biggest hits. I found these shocks to provide an incredibly plush ride and when you combine that with the ultra soft seat foam, I would describe the overall ride quality of this General XP as outright pillowy. However, that comes at the expense of overall chassis stability. By that I mean under acceleration, braking or cornering, especially at speed, the XP trailhead suffers from abnormally high amount of body roll. If I bumped the compression up to where the body roll was better controlled, the ride got harsher than I wanted it to. Did this affect my ability to go where I wanted or ride as hard as I wanted? Definitely not, but it did take some getting used to. More aggressive sway bars might help in the corners, but this would come at the expense of suspension articulation on super rough terrain, and that is something the softer plusher suspension is really good for. As far as power, this 100 horsepower Polaris Twin feels every bit as good here as it does in everything else Polaris uses it in. This General XP feels snappy and fun to drive. It's super easy to get the back end loose whenever you want. Basically, I have no complaints when it comes to power. The General XP Deluxe Ride Command Edition and the Trailhead both have more tech and toys than any General has thus far. The full Ride Command system is included along with Stage 3 Rockford Fosgate audio. Front and rear cameras are standard, as is the plow mode winch setting. 30-inch Pro Armor Crawler XG and XGF tires are mounted to 15-inch aluminum wheels that are not beadlocks, but in my opinion should be. I found this tire combination to provide excellent traction in a wide range of conditions. Now the last thing I want to touch on when it comes to the General XP Trailhead Edition is the value. Traditionally it's almost always been a better deal to buy a special edition because the value of the accessories is more than the increase in price. However, I'm not sure it's as good a deal here as it usually is. The General XP 1000 Deluxe Trailhead Edition is $1,000 US dollars more than the General XP 1000 Deluxe Ride Command Edition. For that $1,000, you get the rear rack, the light bar, and the cool raised graphics. Now, the rear rack alone is a $1,000 option. The light bar is about $170. Essentially, what this means is that you're getting the light bar for free. Is this valuable? Yes, but it's not great value, especially if you would rather have a different LED light setup. It's definitely not a bad deal by any means. It's just not as good as other Polaris Special Edition models have traditionally been. So my final verdict on Polaris's 2022 General XP Trailhead Edition is this. If you don't find value in the rear rack or the light bar, 
you're better off buying the XP Ride Command Edition, which is otherwise identical in every way. On the other hand, if you need the extra capacity of the cargo rack and planned on buying a small light bar anyway, then the trailhead is definitely what you want. It's every bit as capable and even more comfortable than previous General XP models that came with QS3 shocks. So if you're not a super aggressive, wide open kind of rider, I think you're gonna love this soft suspension. Dirt Tracks has been sponsored by Hercules Tire, ride in our strength. Jemco Cargo Boxes, be prepared for anything. And by Blue Ox, towing doesn't have to be a drag.